Good morning. Okay. When I closed off yesterday evening, I had fully intended to come out here this morning and set up the spray booth and put the plastic on the t over top of the green cloth and start spraying. And then I, I started thinking about some of the pieces that we're going to have to be later fastening on top of here, like there's, a, there's four fairly, fairly large pieces that I do believe should also be painted the 66 gray. And uh, yeah, you, you see them here in, in, in step uh, 25. And, and I'm just thinking that, and, and 26. Now, uh, now, mind you, there is got there does have to be photo etch put on some of them, like the the ladders and what have you. And I don't know if I'd want to spray over top of the ladders or put the ladders on afterwards. After maybe I accented them a little bit with the uh, uh, black brass stuff, you know, so that they stand out. That that seemed to work pretty good. And then I, I just used. Uh, uh, clear coat uh, as a as a uh, an adhesive as a glue. I think we use clear coat uh, flat, and and it just was sticky enough that it, when it dis when it dried, it it just the ladder just stuck to the side of the paint, and it worked out really well. Not that you not that you couldn't pick it off if you wanted to, but who's going to wonder, right? Okay, now I'm just thinking about that, so I'm, I just wondering maybe I should just go ahead and. And get the, get these. Otherwise, all I'm going to be doing is painting these these three parts, uh, or spraying them. And and you know how I love to set up my airbrush and have to clean it up afterwards. Yeah. So uh, I, the less of that I have to do, the better. And and yet that's that's part of the deal. So so I don't know. Uh, I I don't know what's the matter with me. I don't know why I don't like to do it. Um, and uh, and as far as the photo etch goes, I know I complain a lot about the photo etch, but. Once I'm actually tinkering away at it, like when I put these uh, little eight uh, uh, gussets on, uh, well, uh, I was sort of enjoying doing it. So uh, maybe, maybe I'm just maybe I got to stop complaining about it and just get at it. Now uh, we didn't have a sunrise to show you this morning, so there's no use talking about that. Uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it's cloudy out there right now. We don't want to talk about that either. Now, I I did get a comment from one of the viewers. I think it was Barry, and and Barry, like as, as a lot of you know, uh, uh, Peter of Oscale Modeling uh, did his box opening of his Yamato, and Barry said something to the effect of, "I don't know where I would put it," and I was thinking the same thing. And then and then uh, recently, it just hit me. I, I have a perfect place to put it, and we'll talk about that later. Let's roll back. Okay, I am on my very last gusset here, and I I just wanted to be sure and mention this. I actually started doing this on the second one, and what I what I do is I'm filing the corner down. So just filing the corner off, maybe half a millimeter. And that way, if you remember, I was talking about the fact that there was, you know, glue holding the thing out. Well, this sort of, the, the corner then sort of goes around the, the glue. And uh, in other words, the, the edges of the gusset then can touch the bottom of the platform and the side of the superstructure a lot better. It can get right in there. Anyway, this is the last one. I'm not going to frustrate myself by trying to show it on camera. They're they're not going as easy as I thought they were going to. I remember these things going a lot easier when we were doing them on the Bismarck. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Okay, we got them. What do you think the chances are of not breaking any off before I get through here? Oh, 
Okay, I have a page back here to step 23. And, because uh, we're not really done 23. We got most of the large pieces stuck on, yes. But there's, you know, we got to put these binocular units down in place. And uh, we, we can't really do that until we get these, these uh, modules painted. And, and then we can stick them in place. And uh, if you remember, I said I was going to worry about the photo etched parts that go, uh, gussets that go in there later. Uh, that's still the plan. So I think probably tomorrow morning I'm going to have to set up. Maybe I'll get started on it this evening already. I know you can't see the clock, but it's 7.52. So I'm just going to maybe set up to, uh, to spray these parts. And uh, tomorrow morning uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Okay, you will recognize that as yesterday's episode. You will also recognize that it had question marks at the beginning there. Let's just let's just get this back to the beginning. Alright, we got question marks here. Normally what I do is I change those question marks to whatever the daily episode happens to be. You you can see over here on the right hand side I, I can change it with a keyboard. And I'm gonna change it to 1228, which I believe is what it should have said. Okay, now we'll go back to the beginning. Okay, this is what we should have had. Now, I don't know what happened yesterday. I was sure that I remembered actually changing that. But I guess maybe I didn't. Maybe I got sidetracked and just thought I did. <laughs> I'm doing a lot of that lately. Anyway, I thought I'd just sort of explain what happened. I start out from a template. And the, t the basic template, it just has the question marks and the theme song. And then I just add everything to it and adjust the volumes and everything accordingly. Uh, yeah. There we go. Yeah, well, you've seen it already. Okay, I thought I'd uh, just explain that. I, I hope that's helpful. I know there were some people wondering. Well, I've been kind of busy, and I did not set up the spray booth this evening. Yeah, uh, I guess we're going to have to do that in the morning. But I'm noticing, see, where's something I can point with here? Right here, just above the corner of the of the shed in the backyard is the uh, is where the sun usually rises normally this this camera here is uh, zoomed in right there uh, but I'm noticing the sky looks like it's breaking there it's clearing now a while ago we actually had rain here uh, and it got kind of muggy and I don't know it says it's only 43 percent humidity but it feels really close in the house. In fact, I turned on the AC a few minutes ago, trying to cool it down a bit. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, indoor temperature 26.4, 26.4 on this one, 26.5 on this one. That's not bad. How come I'm hot? <laughs> Maybe it's that pizza. <laughs> yeah, pizza day. Okay. All right, we'll see you in the morning. Okay, it is morning. Okay, I am sure you have heard me say a few times it's over on the other side of the model table. Well, this is the other side of the model table. And, uh, okay, now, we were talking earlier about where would I put the Yamato if I was to have it. Now, when I, when I made this case, when I was measuring it out, at that time, the uh, Yamato kit wasn't available. Uh, and I remember even talking about saying something, well, wouldn't it be nice if Trumpeter was to make the Yamato? And so I, you know, I took the, the dimensions of the real ship and, and, and uh, divided them by 200 because I was pretty sure that Trumpeter would do it in, in 200 scale to keep it in, in line with all the rest. And uh, 
uh, I calculated the, that I could get the Yamato in this case. <clears throat> At that time, I did not realize that, that the uh, Iowa and the Missouri were actually longer than the Yamato. I didn't know that. Uh, in, in the, you know, the model, the model kit is maybe only about this much longer, but it's longer. And I have since discovered that I can get the Iowa in here with maybe a quarter of an inch to spare. <laughs> I won't be able to have any flags flying out the back. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, all right. So where would I where would I put the uh, the Yamato if I was to if I was to build it? Uh, well, <laughs> it could go right down here. It could. It, there's lots of lots of space down here. It could it could sit down there, and may, maybe I could have have it on some kind of rails that I, I could pull it out. I don't know. I'm just sort of thinking out loud. Um, anyway, the the plan right now is right now this is designed for three ships, but I now but now with the with the Iowa coming maybe <laughs> if I ever get at it. Uh, we'll have four and I, I think I can get four in here if one of them is is sitting right on on the uh, shelf here and then the other three are sort of spaced evenly I think I think it'll just make it and it'll it'll look good from your perspective uh, when you're standing here in front of the ship yeah I know that the the hull of the of one is maybe going to block the, the the deck of the next one underneath it uh, for, for view wise but anyway back to the Yamato it'll go down here I uh, you know I've got leftover plexiglass I might be able to cut it you know I'd probably have to do it in two sections uh, well, you know that's a long way down the road you know I, I'll be honest with you if I was to get the Yamato uh, in all likelihood I might never get it finished and unless I was to start on the next instead of the Iowa, I mean that's a thought. See, we'll see what happens. And anyway, I, I don't have it yet. It's not even in Winnipeg yet, <laughs> as far as I know. I, I think though the hobby store would let me know if they got it in because they know I'm interested. So uh, we'll see what happens. Anyway, yeah, the Yamato can go there. Okay, now what pieces are we going to need to cover up these four spots? Well, I know that this one here is called the L14. I looked it up. It's actually on the next page. And so we may as well get that. Okay, and that, that actually goes right here somehow after we get all the flashing off of it. And then... Uh, K10. It looks like they're on different sprues. Okay. I don't need to look for the numbers. They're, they're just real, real obvious. I don't want to be getting too aggressive here and accidentally put little divots in my parts. You know, when I first got these uh, nippers, I was using a pair of homemade nippers to, you know, to give these a break, you might say. In other words, to not wear these out. And and I've slowly gotten away from that, and I'm, I'm just using these for everything now. Uh, I'm not really noticing a, a whole lot of difference from when they were brand new. Maybe very, very slight, but it might be just my imagination. Okay, so we we got these two now. And uh, is there anything else on the on the K sprue? Okay, what is this piece? Maybe it's maybe it's uh, described in in the other uh, in step twenty five. Uh, okay, now while I'm thinking of it, why did I put the micro crystal clear here? Uh, I was at the computer about half an hour ago, and I was editing out my last little bit of footage and I got a notification that uh, our friend uh, UK Jason has put out a uh, tutorial on how he applies this sort of stuff uh, for window glazing and it's it's worth seeing
now as soon as you've got coverage that's it you don't need to add more or anything like that um, the more you've got in the slower the process of it setting and drying I'll, uh, if I remember I'll, I'll put a link in the description to today's episode how you can just quickly go right to it yeah it's 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 not very long I think it's only about six minutes long and like I say if you're interested in doing window glazing, it's it's worth seeing. In fact, it, it's the best demonstration I've seen so far. Thank you, Jason. Okay, I was mentioning earlier that this must be on a previous uh, page. And then I remembered, no, wait a minute, I made that. And this was the piece that, if you will recall me saying that I had painted it with the uh, 56 and later regretted it. So I'm going to have to... Uh, spray it over with the 66. So th this is already made. And it was basically four pieces. There was the main piece, there was the two pieces on the side, and then there is a little bit of a photo etch that you can just barely see there. Gives a tiny bit of detail. It could be that when I spray it with the uh, with the 66, it, the details will come out better. At least I've, I've noticed that, that anything that's uh, painted really really dark you don't you don't see the details I don't, I don't know maybe maybe it's my eyes I'm not sure okay now normally when you have to make two of something like we have to make make two of these units right here and uh, see this is number d21 oh oh I see they, that's because these are different Okay, I, d I did not realize that. These are, yeah, these are mirror image to each other, even though... Okay, I thought, okay, I th I, my mistake, you <laughs> they don't need to say make two, because these are, these are not the same. Anyway, uh, yeah. Oh my goodness, maybe I'm getting too old for this. Okay, now that I know that these two are different, I should be able to tell them apart. Okay, now we need two H20s. They're not perfectly round. Maybe they're not supposed to be. Okay, they're both they're both sort of uh, oval shaped, so I guess that's all right. Two H thirty threes and two H fives. Now I was looking at these a moment ago, and they look like a mushroom vent. Okay, I think we have all the pieces now to cover up these uh, four places. And I'm just going to go ahead now and take my time and clean the flashing off of all this stuff. And uh, I'm going to cut today's episode a little bit short. And when I'm doing the, the uh, final edit, uh, somebody please remind me to put the link to Jason's tutorial about the window glazing. Uh, in the bottom of my description, you know, like underneath where it says, this is not a tutorial. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody, and all being well, we'll be seeing you tomorrow.